In the last episode, I was revealed as Borussia Dortmund's brand new manager and we got off to a great start. We destroyed FC Cole and Bochum in our first two games of the campaign, which puts us top of the Bundesliga. We also spent 30 million on Lucharel Gertrude to strengthen our backline, which leaves us 130 million to spend after selling a couple of players of our own. You guys also left a lot of suggestions on what we should do with this money and in today's video, we are going to make sure that we spend it on one or two players, so stay tuned for that. Ladies and gents, we are back with Dortmund, so drop a like on this video if you're happy about that and smash that subscribe button. Now, as I've just said, you guys left a ton of suggestions on what we should do with the budget we've got, and it comes as no surprise to me that you think we should get a new left back. Some of you thought I should bring Ian Matson in on a permanent deal. I mean, he's a very good player, 21, 76 overall, but I don't think he's good enough to be in the team if we're serious about winning the Bundesliga title and the UCL. Some of you also suggested Alfonso Davies just to spite back Bayern Munich for stealing all of Dortmund's best players over the years and won't this be a good sign and only 22 years old already 83 rated he would legitimately make us such a threat in the Bundesliga but there was another player you guys suggested Federico DeMarco he's 25 83 overall he actually made the UCL final last year with Inter Milan where they unfortunately didn't beat Manchester City but I honestly feel like this would be such a good signing if we went for this guy either of these players would be an insane addition to Dortmund but before we actually bring any of these players into the team i want to go through your comments from the last episode starting with ghjn who said dortmund actually won the ucl back in 1997 and honestly i've got to hold my hands up and say i messed up he is absolutely bang on ladies and gents so when i said in the last episode that dortmund had never won the champions league before i was completely wrong so i do hold my hands up i apologize for that the next comment is from yimio who said sign sancho on a permanent deal now even though i've gone through your comments i'm still 50 50 on this we all know how good sancho is and we all know how good he can become but before I make any choices on whether I bring him in on a permanent deal he's got to prove himself at Dortmund once again this does mean I will be sending Bano Gittens out on loan if we are going to be using Jadon Sancho as our rotational winger but guys I feel like this is definitely the right move Bano Gittens will get game time on loan and Sancho will get to prove himself at Dortmund and either way we're going to get a winger at the end of it and our last comment is from Mamadou Diop who says this career mode you should focus on developing young slash not very known players like Klopp at the time to keep it realistic and honestly I kind of agree but I kind of disagree too. I mean there's no denying how good this Dortmund team is it's full of young raw talent but not much experience and I feel like that's where it lacks. I mean they do have their old players in the team like Matt Tomos, like Marco Royce but apart from them two who the hell is experienced in this team right now? I feel like if we are going to get the best out of this Dortmund team we've got to mix the raw young talent we've got right now with a bit of experience. That's not me saying we've got to turn Dortmund into a retirement term. We've just got to make sure that the players we bring in have actually got experience at the top, top level. And I feel like that's just settled the debate for the left back I'm bringing in, Federico Di Marco. I mean, he's competing at the top, top level with Inter Milan right now. He's not too old. He's a fantastic player and he's got UCL experience. He's got all of what we need right now. Now, they want a maximum of 61 million. So I reckon we go in the middle of that, 52 and a half million. They've accepted that just like that. Why do I feel like I always overpay? Well, it doesn't matter, guys. We're offering a very cushy contract, 100 grand a week. That's a lot more than what he's on right now at Inter. Let's see if he accepts. And he does. Ladies and gents, we've got our fullback. DeMarco is coming into a Dortmund team that is strong as an ox. Bayer Leverkusen and Bayern Munich, you better watch yourselves, lads. We're coming for you. Now, we do have to address something else, guys. Felix and Mecca. I mean, we all saw how good he was in the first game of the Bundesliga campaign. He absolutely bossed the midfield. And I was very torn on whether we should replace him with some Bombere or give him a chance until January. Some of you guys said we should give him a chance until January to prove himself. Others said we should sign Warren Zaire Emery and actually go through with it. And wouldn't this be such a good signing, ladies and gents? But I feel like with Emeka, we do at least owe him a chance. It's not like he had a very bad first game. In fact, he was one of the best players on the entire pitch. And as you guys know, we are smashing the Bundesliga right now. We are only two games into the campaign, but two wins from two is way better than two losses from two, isn't it? As for the UCL, we all know what Dortmund's group stage was. Group F alongside PSG, Milan and Newcastle United, or as I like to personally call it, the group of absolute death. But in real life, guys, Dortmund actually topped this group stage and have made it past the round of 16 after getting past PSV. So I feel like the bare minimum of what we've got to do this year with Dortmund is get to the quarterfinals just to match what they're doing in real life. 
And this is the team that we are going to try and achieve that with. And with the addition of DeMarco, that back four is looking absolutely ridiculous too. We also have Adiemi playing on the right wing and Daniel Marlon playing on the left side. It just makes sense considering Marlon's right foot and Adiemi's left footed. For as good as they are, guys, it's been a slow start for the pair of them. No goal contributions for either player in the first few games. Hopefully they can sort this out in the coming months. And we can start this now with a win over Ardenheim. Look at that. A Felix and Mecca goal and Brant goal gets us a 2-1 victory still undefeated and Felix and Mech is now on the score sheet too can we go for undefeated yes we can Daniel Molin on the score sheet and Felix and Mech with his second of the season but our next game guys is a tough one PSG in our first UCL game of the season now PSG are obviously favorites to top the group but honestly we haven't got a bad team either so I'm definitely not writing us off I mean, look at the team we've got, guys. We're definitely no slouch against PSG, but I'm not too sure why they aren't sharp. I've got them all on the right training plans, for goodness sake. Well, here we go, guys. Dortmund versus PSG. Heavy favourites to top the group and to win the UCL. So this is going to be very interesting to see how we get on. 23 minutes into the game, it has been all PSG so far. We haven't got a sniff nope. in this game, ladies and gents. Great tackle. Emery Chan's coming forward. We are looking for Kareem, the Dream Adiemi, and we found him. We're going to try and take it. Oh my god, Adiemi, has got so much pace. Can he put us 1-0 up? Oh, what a save from Donnarumma. Here come PSG once again. They are not giving us any chance to breathe. Oh my god, Solo. Oh, he's found killing Mbappe. What a save from Gregor Kobel. Well, here we come with Kareem Adiemi. He's cutting inside from the right. He's going to try and find Julian Brandt. We've actually got Julian Brandt. He's got a bit of space. Can he put us 1-0 up? Oh my god, Julian Brandt. You've got to put that away, lads. Yes, you're on the ball early in the second half. Mbappe's on it. Oh, oh my God. What a save, Greg or Kobel. Now it's our turn to attack. Marlin's on the ball. What a freaking strike. Daniel Marlin. That I did not expect to go in. We have been on the back foot this entire game almost. And one of the fierce chances we get, we actually put it away. PSG coming forward. Oh, that was a bad tackle from Slotterbeck. Is that going to be a red card or a yellow card? It's a red card. Slotterbeck's been sent off. And Mbappe's on the free kick. And he's put it away as well. Oh, that was such a bad... Just after we went 1-0 up as well, the timing on that couldn't have been any worse. So this is how we're going to line up for the rest of the game. Hummels is going to come on. Actually, I'm going to put him in the middle just because he's a bit slow. But this is how we are going to get a point from this game. Mbappe's coming forward now. Matt Hummels is against the Matt Thomas has just been turned so easily there. Great defending. DeMarco is indeed coming forward though. Look at him go. He's got the pace. He's found Makoku. Yusuf and Makoku, the youngster, could win us this game. And he has 84 minutes on the clock. We have gone 2-1 up against PSG when we are down to 10 men. He has been so absent in this game, but the first chance he gets, he puts it away so easily. But we're not out of the woods just yet. Curly Mawani is coming forward. Matt Tummels is in chase of him. Matt Tummels has dispossessed him. He's given it straight back to him. Mbappe's there. Oh, no, we've choked it. We've bottled the lead with one minute to go. Ten-man Dortmund. We came so close to getting all three points against PSG, but it looks like it just wasn't going to happen. And after the first game of the UCL group stage, Milan are top of it after beating Newcastle. We're second alongside PSG, and Newcastle are rock bottom. Now, we are against Wolfsburg next in the Bundesliga, but as you can see from the team, they're bloody knackered, aren't they? Now, we've fully rotated the team pretty much apart from a mecca, and look at the state of it, guys. We've got a lot of depth in our team. I've also just noticed that Ben Sabane is actually not out of position at centre-back. Maybe it's worth me converting him to a centre-back and see what happens. But with the rotations, can we go still undefeated? Yes, we can. Julian Brandt, Full Grug and Sancho. I mean, fair play to Sancho. First game, first goal. And that puts us joint top of the table with Bayern Munich. Both of us have played five games and we're both still undefeated. Honestly, if we are to win the title this year, we've got to be pretty much perfect the entire campaign. Now, our next game is in the DFB Pokal. And look who it's against, ladies and gents. Bayern bloody Munich. I mean, this is a great chance for us to get one up over him. But half of our starting 11 is still absolutely knackered, even after rotating. We're going to put Ben Sabini in over DeMarco. Brandt's coming off for Marco Royce. And I feel like Matt Tummels is going to come on for Schuller. Other than that, guys, there's not really much else I can do about it. But here come Bayern Munich on the counter-attack. Schlotterbeck is versus Harry Kane. Harry Kane is dead. 
definitely got people with him. Can we get a foot in? Harry Kane's still on the ball. He's found Koeman, and Koeman has missed an absolute certain goal. But we've got a penalty against us. Harry Kane is taking it. We're going to go top right. Oh, ah, what a save, Koeman get. Oh, no way, Harry Kane, you jammy git. Almost mirroring his penalty against Denmark. We go 1-0 down. So unlucky, though. Five minutes remaining in this game. We need a counter-attack from this corner if we are to get anything from it. Are we going to get one? Oh, come on, man. Really? That's how you're going to do this? We get knocked out of the DFB Pokal in round two by Bayern. But to be fair, it might be a blessing in disguise because look how knackered the team actually is right now. I mean, now that we don't have to worry about the DFB Pokal, they can actually get a bit more rest in between games. We are once again in the Bundesliga against Toffenheim. We are still undefeated. A 2-1 victory. Jaden Sancho and Marco Reus with the goals. Back in the UCL, though, against Milan, it's a 3-2 loss. Rafael Leo gets the win of full Krug and Jaden Sancho once again get us the goals. I've got to admit, Jaden Sancho is impressing the hell out of me. Three games, three goals, and one assist. I mean, he's definitely proven to us why he belongs at Dortmund. So I pulled him into my office for a chat after training. Sancho, you're having a great season so far. I know you're not playing every game, but when you do play, you make a difference. And Sancho replied saying, thanks Goodwin, when I play right now, I feel unstoppable. And to be honest, I don't want to go back to United. I really do feel at home at Dortmund. And I replied saying, well Sancho, if you keep playing how you are, come January, you may not have to. We're back in the Bundesliga now against Union Berlin. It's a two-all draw this time. Adeyemi and DeMarco with the goals. We actually clinched a draw. My days, we should be beating Union Berlin. Can we get a win against Werder Bremen? No, we can't. We drop another two points. Daniel Morland gets us the point, but we've got to be playing better than this. But to be fair, we are still top of the Bundesliga. Eight games played, six wins, two draws. Bayern do have a game in hand over us, which they'll definitely win and go top with. But I feel like right now we can't be too harsh. We're not even 10 games into the season guys we definitely got off to a good start and we have the chance to make it even better as we play newcastle away from home in the ucl next well look at our first team man they're still absolutely knackered i've done all the training plans i legitimately do not know what's going on maybe the schedule's too much for them right now i feel like using the second team against newcastle is the way to go we've got a lot of experience we've got Jaden sancho who's balling out right now i feel like this will carry us to a win here come newcastle on the first attack Ben Sabine is in chase of Anthony Gordon. He's gone to the wing. We've pushed him to the wing. We've done really well. Look at that from Ian Matson. And we've got the counter-attack. We've got a free kick just shy of half time. Good delivery in Sancho. That's actually not a bad ball at all. Oh, where's the runners? Oh, my God. We should have buried that. Here come Newcastle. They're pretty deadly. Look at that. Gordon. Oh, my God. Gordon, you cannot finish your dinner. And there we go. That's the final chance of the game. Another point gained in the UCL. We've yet to win one, though. If we can bounce back in the Bundesliga, that'd be great. Oh, look at that. Emre Chan, Brandt, Adiemi. Kobel got injured. Marlin and Emre Chan once again. 5 0 hammering to Frankfurt, but Kobel is injured. We definitely need to check that out. He's out for five months. Are you taking the mick, ladies and gents? We're having such a good season as well. That's thrown a rate spanner in the works. Our second choice keeper is Alexander Meyer. 74 overall guys 14 ratings lower than Gregor Kobel it is official we are screwed our back four has got to put in a shift man if we concede any shots the likelihood is they're going into the back of the net and I will give you three guesses on who our next opponent is yeah you guessed it guys buying freaking Muni you cannot write this can you got Felix and Mecca on the ball we're gonna feed oh my god what a ball Daniel Morley can make this one nil oh what a save Leroy Sane coming forward now. 23 minutes on the clock. He's cutting forward really nicely. Harry Kane is inside the box. Back to nope. Leroy Sane. Great tackle from DeMarco. That's why we paid 52.5 million for you. Kareem Adeyemi is on the ball now. We're coming forward. Kareem Adeyemi to put us 1-0 up. Oh, my God. What a finish from Kareem the Dream. Adeyemi, 30 minutes on the clock almost. We go 1-0 up against Bayern. We are getting our revenge on them from the DFB Pokal, ladies and gents. What a finish. That is so composed. Here we come now with Felix and Mecca. I'm trying to find someone. I see that run on the far side. Gertrude is going to find it. We're going to go inside to Brandt. Brandt, who's been on form all season. Oh, what a goal that would have been. Felix and Mecca's got it. We're going to take a shot from distance. And oh my God, we've hit the ball again. Are you taking the mick? But here come Bayern Munich. No, after all that. No, no, you can't do that to us. Come on, man. You are kidding me. 
We hit the bar twice in the span of, what, 10 or 15 seconds. They get one goddamn chance to the other end, and they put it away. I can't help but feel like in that situation... I mean, what is our keeper doing there, man? Kerbal would have had that dead and buried. Oh, no. Jamal Musiala is coming forward totally against the run of play. Jamal Musiala. Oh, no. Can we get the ball away? Oh, no, 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 no. Just kick. Oh, there's no way. Of all the ways to concede, that's how it happens. Guys, you've got to be taking the mick right now. We literally tried so hard to get that ball clear. Slide tackles after blocks after slide tackles. The keeper was completely caught out of position. And Jamal Mossiol is never going to get an easier goal than that in his career. But here we go with Makoku. Makoku to put us to all. And he's done it, Makoku. That's the second game in a row he scored against Bayern Munich. He loves playing against them. Yusuf and Makoku once again being basically marked out of the game. But once he gets an opportunity, you better believe he takes it. Here come Bayern Munich though. Extra time is all used. Oh no, not like this. Not like this, please. Oh no, I thought we got the tackling. Can we get a tackling? It's gone for a corner. This is literally the last chance of the game for Bayern. Kimmich to take the corner. That is a pretty poor delivery. Oh my God. What a save from our second choice goalkeeper, Raya. He has legitimately solo just saved that game for us. Now, guys, I'm looking at the stats. I've got to say, so far, I'm pretty impressed. Brandt's got 11 goal contributions in 14 games. 7 for Makoku in 10. 6 and 11 for Marlon. Even Emre Chan's getting on the score sheet, too. I mean, Adeyemi's goal contributions aren't amazing for a winger, but honestly, those stats do not represent how well he's actually playing. However, our next game's against Newcastle, a tomb this time in the UCL, and this is absolutely a must-win game, ladies and gents. As you can see from the table, Milan and PSG are first and second so if we win our next game against Newcastle United we put a lot of pressure on PSG in Milan but can we get past them without Kubel yes we can add Yemi with both goals it's like he just did what I said fair play to him we've once again rotated back in the Bundesliga 2-1 win against Stuttgart full grug with a brace I've got to be honest it's really nice to know that when the first team's knackered the second team can do just as good of a job but against Borussia Mönchengladbach now, full strength team, a 3-1 victory. Makoku, Adeyemi and Julian Brandt, those three players right there, I can see being the stars of this series right now. But there's no time to celebrate, we're back in the UCL against Milan next in the group stage. And as you can see guys, they're running away with it right now, so our game against them has to be a win. Now I know some of you lot say go all out performance, go all out energy, but I'm going to stick it on balance man. It's pointless having sharpness if you're absolutely knackered. It's thanks to that we've got to play a second team against Milan and Jesus Christ we couldn't have started this game any worse Olivier Giroud I believe what a goal AC Milan are coming forward once again Chuck Wheezy is coming forward and look at that that's 2-0 before half time and we're getting annihilated by AC Milan no wonder the top of the group Pulisic is coming forward for AC Milan. This could be embarrassing, ladies and gents. Chuck Weezy's just made it 3-0. What are we doing? There's a very strong chance, ladies and gents, that we're going to get knocked out of the UCL before we even get a chance to compete in it. Now, this is how the group looks after five games. And honestly, I think we're going into the Europa League, guys. Unless our next game against PSG is literally a 3-0 or 4-0 win, we are out of the Champions League. But it's the total opposite in the Bundesliga. We are undefeated still, 30 points on the board two points clear of Bayern but our next three games are a nightmare for god's sake we've got Bayer Leverkusen away from home next then we're playing Leipzig six days later and then we're playing PSG in the UCL yeah we are right up against it so let's get Leverkusen out of the way first a 3-1 victory oh my god Gertrude Daniel Marlin and Adeyemi I did not see that coming that's very unlike Leverkusen in real life right now we've rotated for Dortmund and we still bloody won Harley and Matt in a 2-1 victory. Ladies and gents, Dortmund in the Bundesliga are unstoppable. But can we take the form we got in the Bundesliga into the UCL, ladies and gents? That is the big question. We need to win this game by three goals in order to go through to the round of 16. Here we come though. DeMarco is indeed on the ball. We have found Daniel Marlin. He's up against Marquinhos. He's definitely got the pace on him though. Daniel Marlin to make it 1-0. Yes, he has. Ladies and gents, there is actually a chance 
we are going through to the round of 16, but we still cannot afford to concede. And that is exactly what's just happened, man. On the stroke of our time, who else would it be? Killing friggin' Mbappe. We've got Kareem the Dream, Adiemi on the ball. We're going to try and find Yusuf for Makoko. He's got the strength. He's got the pace. He's got the power. Can he get the shot off? The tight angle is there. The bloody goal was not. Here comes Usman Dembele. He's got the pace over Sula. Oh, my God. If he gets a shot off here, it's game over. Oh, what a save from Batman. Fair play. We're not out the woods just yet, though. Is PSG... Oh, hang on. Wait, what? What's... Is that offside or something? What's that for? Wait, hang on a minute. That's a penalty. What the hell happened there? Oh, my God. God, Sula made a tackle on a player who didn't even have the ball. Killing Mbappe to take it. We're going to go bottom left. Oh, we went the right way. We just weren't quick enough. It looks like we're heading out of the UCR, man. We just haven't been good enough in the group stage, have we? Julian Brandt with the corner. There's still 20 minutes in this game to go. We can definitely still get a draw at least. Adiemi on the corner this time. A good delivery. That's a great delivery. Head on that. Oh, look at that from Slaughterbeck. Two apiece in the last 15 minutes of this game. We may not be going through to the round of 16, but we definitely are making life easy for PSG in the last game of the UCL group stage. Kylian Mbappe is on the ball. Oh, we are against the runner play here. Schlotterbeck is going to come inside. Oh, Kylian Mbappe is there, and they've got a third just like that. In the January transfer window, we have to get a better keeper. We cannot afford to wait for Cable to come back into action. And look at this. That's the fourth goal. PSG have wiped the absolute floor with us in the last 10 minutes. Hakimi with it, and that took us out of the UCL. And it's official, ladies and gents. We finished third in Group F. Not at all what we wanted in the end. We are in the Europa League, though, so there is still a chance we can get European glory with Dortmund. Koble's still out for another three months, man. Maya is just not good enough in goal. I can't afford to wait for Koble to come back as good as he is, so we definitely do need to get a better keeper in January. Let me know in the comments who you think we should go for. But we can at least focus back on the Bundesliga, and it's a one all draw, man. We did rotate full Krog with the goal. We should be beating Augsburg, though. Got the strongest start in 11 back against Mainz, and it's a 3-1 victory. Adeyemi with a brace, and Makoku with a goal himself. And that leaves us top of the Bundesliga by two points, heading into the January transfer window. We've still yet to actually lose a game, man, even after playing Bayern Munich. We do have 55 million euros to spend in January. We do need a goalkeeper, but we may have money left over after bringing in a goalie, so let me know in the comments what you do with this money. And remember, guys, the next episode is only two two days away so drop a like on this video if you're happy about that subscribe if you're new around here and if you want to see more content from me just click right here to watch this